fans know you recently, your work with Mike Alvarado. Uh, how did you come about to where you joined his camp? Um, can you tell me the details of that? His, his manager, um, Henry Delgado, reached out to me uh, just before the Prescott fight, and uh, I was pretty much just hired as a, as a cut man with him yeah. and been working with them ever since. But this um, past camp, the fight, the rematch with Brandon Rios, you seemed to play more of a crucial role, like in the corner, kind of offering insight. Was it uh, something you saw heading into the rematch to where you felt you needed to do something different? No, this was, uh, this was um, his manager, Delgado. Henry Delgado, he, um, he, gave me the, he gave me the opportunity to train him. He, um, okay. I was brought, you know, because, because of my experience and what I've done, you know, so they, they asked me to be the trainer. So okay. I pretty much ended up training him for this, for this fight. And, uh, what did you want to do different uh, with him in the rematch? Like, what, what did you see in Brandon Rios to where you knew your fighter could win? Come on, man, we saw it. We saw, we saw the fight. You know, look at the first fight, and then you look at the second fight, and you have a complete, uh, Mike, uh, completely different Mike Alvarado from me, as opposed to one and two. Now, um, now, things had to play out the way they did. He had to have lost the reels in order for him to be able to go into the next level that he did. And so um, he, he had a better understanding of what he needed to do to win the fight. And so. Now, there were talks about him fighting Pacquiao, but Bob Arum said, you know, Mike had the hand injury, and he went with Brandon Rios. Were you disappointed that the Pacquiao fight didn't come? You know, in, bo bo in boxing, it's, uh, it, it always, it never, tends, it, it never really plays off like you like for it to, yeah. but, but sometimes, you know, things, things happen, and you just got to deal with it, you know. Unless you have a signed contract, and all, everything else is just hearsay. Um, okay. I, you know, and, and remember, Remember that Reels, Reels was the first was supposed to fight Pacquiao after he after he beat Alvarado, but it didn't play out that way. And instead, they went for the rematch, and uh, and now we were supposed to be the ones to fight Manny Pacquiao, but Reels got it. And um, you know, it's just to drop the luck. That's okay. just the way it is. What are your thoughts on Mike Alvarado's future um, at 140, and just your future together with him? Well, that that all depends on them, right? Because you know, I'm all, you know, just just the same way that I was able, just the same way that they brought me in, they could just bring somebody else in. Oh, okay. Because you know, I don't, I don't have, we don't have a signed contract. You're taking it day by day, kind of. That's just, a, that's just the way it is. Boxing is just the way, that's just the way it is. You know? could, could you change the subject? Could you tell viewers about your history in boxing? How, where were you born and raised? Your childhood and how you get into boxing? I was born and raised in South Central Los Angeles, and um, and, you know, and I started boxing when I was 11 years old. I didn't, I didn't really care too much about it until the age of 15 when I, when I sparred Alexis Arguello. I put hands on him and, um, and I had like, three, four guys offer me professional contracts and they were giving, offering me money. Okay. Well, that, that day I fell in love with boxing and I, and I always thought that I'd make it big as, as a boxer and be a world champion and never have to look at anything else or even had a second a plan B. Got you. Um, looking back at how things played out, what were some of your best me memories from your fighting days? You know, just the highs and the lows. The, the two highlights of, I got three. The first one was um, putting hands on Alexis Arguello when he was already a two-time world champion. I was only 15 at the time. Mm -hmm. And then my second one would be um, sparring with Tommy Hurt. No, no before that, um, my second one would be sparring with my brother, who was, uh, who was tw 20 at the time and undefeated. We went three minutes. We went three rounds, five minutes. I never wore a headgear when sparring after, you know, after I had, after 20, the age of 22, and um, and he didn't hit, he didn't land one single punch in my face in, in okay. three rounds, okay. 15 minutes. So I was pretty cool. And the third one would be sparring with um, Tommy Hurst, okay. and and in three rounds, Tommy didn't hit me with one jab. Wow. Now your brother, uh, Gennaro, you know, beloved by fans. Um, you know, what were some of your best memories just with him, the connection you had as brothers? Well, I always treated him like the little bitch that he was, you know, so, you know, so that's, that was a relationship that we had together, and, you know, and um, I was his older brother, he was my younger brother, and, uh, and we, we, we clicked from, from childhood, from the time that he was a little kid, and, you know, we were, we were just, uh, it was always, we were always together in one way or another, and um, you know, it, uh, 
and you know, I, I ended up. It's pretty much. Um, I ended up being like a like a second father to him. Yeah. You know, because regardless of whatever happened in life, you know, he, he, you know, I'd be the kind of get called, and uh, whether it was in sports or house or whatever it was, and we have we have a special bond. What are your thoughts just on the legacy he left, the champion being a champion boxing, and how hard is it for you, to, you know, to miss him to have said goodbye? You know, it doesn't. Um, coming from 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 poverty like we did, you know, and not having much of anything, you know, it's like it's great, man. And uh, and and the, and the greatest gift that we have, you know, to uh, and, and I mean this personally as well, is that um, the world will know we exist. And so, you know, we can die tomorrow, and I can die tomorrow, and, and still somewhere down the line, somebody's going to remember that I was you know, Great. That we made an impact in the sport. Got you. Do you um, as far as your own professional career, are you disappointed that you didn't achieve the heights that you knew you were capable of? or No. It's just, I think we all have a life to live, and it and it's pretty much plays out the way it does. And then you just can't, you just can't go looking back and say, "Well, no, I could have, should have." That's 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 the past. What you do is you look forward to today, and then you just try to make it better. And you don't make it just better for yourself; you make it better for somebody else. And, um, and the and the experiences that you live through and that you go through, you pass it on to the next person. Okay. Hoping that they don't make the same mistakes. Right now, the Southern California fight scene is one of the richest scenes out there, as far as just the gym wars the fights um, what's that scene been like just being immersed in it and how have you seen it change over the years well before before we every, every gym that you went to you had contenders you had you have a contender you had a world champion working out there but um, nowadays it's, it's like it's changed it's like um like everything has changed it's not it's not the same you don't have the same fighters and you don't have um, the same desire as you did before today today you have guys fight you know every, every once in a great while back then they were fighting four, five, six, seven times a, a year, and um, and I understand that there's a big difference in, in the way it's been. It was promoted back then, and the, the way it's promoted today. Mm -hmm. But um, you can make tough. It's either you have it or you don't. No. Do you have any memorable like sparring sessions of guys, any names that you fans would recognize, other guys you've sparred with, or memorable gym type fights? Me. Yeah, just, you know, memorable days in the gym or guys you've been in there with. We're all memorable. You know, like I said, man, we, you know, I sparring with Bobby Chacon, sparring with, um, you know, Rodolfo Gato Gonzalez, uh, Jorge Vaca, who went on to beat Roy, uh, Roy Hunnigan for the welterweight yeah. title. You know, it's like, uh, and, and, you know, I mean, there, we just had so many, so many wars in the gym. I, I used to, I mean, I like watching Roberto Duran sparring with uh, Hedgeman Tugan Robertson at the, at the old Main Street gym, or Lupe Aquino with Pablo Baez. It was a great, great sparring. Now, your training career, what is life like for you on, you know, what, what keeps you busy these days? Being able to teach a, I have an amateur kid now that I'm working with, and um, and, I, and I see his progress, and, and and for every for every day that goes by and he gets better, that makes it that much more rich. And because professionals and everybody else, I mean that's kind of like a given already. Yeah. But when you have a kid and you and and you and you and you, and you, and you, and you see his growth and you see how better he's gotten because you've had that input, in, I think that's the that's the best. Part. What are your thoughts just on boxing a day, the good, the bad, just the sport? where it stands today. She discovered Billy the good, a lot of money. Men online. The bad, come on man, you got a lot of prima donnas today and, well, and, um, and everybody, everybody, but everybody believes that they, that that they deserve when they haven't earned it. And, and it just bothered me. I hate to see I, a guy that's uh, 21 and 0. That the only thing he was doing that or, I or better, let me rephrase that. I hate to see a guy that just came out of the being an Olympic team coming in fighting a guy that has two wins, three losses, and then he knocks him out, and he's celebrating like he won a world title. Get the, get the F out of here, man. You're supposed to beat a guy like that. I want to see amateurs that are highly ranked in the United States turn pros, and either we're fighting from eight rounds to ten rounds, and not no four or six rounds. Okay, and what ways has boxing kind of changed your life for the better? Uh, are you kidding me, man? I've, I've seen a whole world that I couldn't even dream of. You know, I don't care. You know, we, we all talk about, like, oh, I want to be a world champion. Well, great. You know, like, I'll give you an example. Floyd Mayweather. I mean, I don't even think he could dream to be where he's at today. Yeah. As opposed to, like, uh, yeah, he knew he'd be a world champion. But you can't, you can't um, understand 
until you walk in their shoes. And I tell you, man, it's like you, you can set the bar, you can set the bar so high, but even then. That bar, we, he, he, he overleaped that big yeah. time. So. All right, well, great conversation. Really appreciate it. All right.